What is assisted suicide? Is it really necessary? Find out that and more in this edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee, as California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. You know, we're your program on the right to life, on what it really is. And as you will likely remember if you listened to us before, the right to life isn't just a religious issue. In fact, it's not a religious issue. It's an issue of the law. The founders of the United States invoked the right to life as a self-evident principle that we are endowed by a creator. So there is God, but our creator has endowed us with certain gifts. The government hasn't endowed us with the gift of life. Our creator did, but the government, in order to be a just government, must ensure this right, the right of the innocent to be alive. And again, in our Constitution, it says several times, no one should be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So the right to life, protecting life, is actually a legal issue. And sometimes that confuses people, and they get lost in the fog of the media coverage of this very important debate. So I want to remind you, we're going to talk today about the euthanasia debate and specifically the argument for compassion and assisting someone in their suicide. That is to say, using medicine not to cure or comfort someone, but to kill them and then characterize that as now comforting them because they're gone. They're just dead. And we get to kill them legally and they don't get due process of law. They don't get legal protection. Very often, these people haven't asked. It's actually superimposed on them, and we'll talk about that even more. But more to the point, they're usually, if they are aware of what's happening, they're usually very depressed. And depression can be treated. Perhaps their illness is incurable, but their depression is very, very treatable. Instead, they're killed. They are killed. And you can't recover from that. So the right to life, yes, it includes the issue of killing innocent babies and the issue of human abortion. But now the practice of medicine has extended itself. It's gone well beyond what it used to do. And it is now used to kill others. Those of you familiar with my writings, if you're familiar with my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. I examined there what Justice Blackmun wrote and what the Supreme Court did in 1973. Many people think it simply allowed women to get an abortion, but it did so much more. In order to have abortion legalized in all of the 50 states, not only did the laws of those states have to be overturned, and a new federal law superimposed, but more importantly for our concerns, the actual practice of medicine was assaulted. Because in Roe v. Wade and then in the companion decision, Doe v. Bolton, doctors were told that they are to be the killers. Doctors are the killers. And that's in Doe v. Bolton. Doesn't get talked about much, but it is the companion conjoined decision to Roe and it's still in effect. Before 1973, before January 22nd of 73, doctors in America didn't kill any babies. They didn't kill anyone because it violated the Hippocratic Oath. And it's the Hippocratic Oath that has made doctors the honorable people, the honorable profession that our society has elevated them to. But the Hippocratic Oath is gone. So we're going to talk today about assisted suicide in the United States. I'm going to read a little bit from my friend Wesley Smith, just an excellent scholar and attorney and an advocate for the vulnerable innocent. And Wesley goes into great depth about what's happening in your state, in your nation right now, and how assisted suicide 
is being nationalized. That's right. You should be aware that assisted suicide, or what's sometimes called medical aid in dying, the Canadians like that one, medical aid in dying, made. Well, that's legalized in several of the states, most notably the West Coast entirely, California, Oregon, Washington, but also in Montana, in Colorado, and in New Mexico, and then on the other coast, in Maine, and Vermont, and New Jersey. That's where it's legalized. But right now, there are numerous states considering legalizing it, and people don't understand. They're appealed to on their emotions, but they don't understand the facts of the law and what really is at risk. We're going to talk about how assisted suicide is one of the principal, principal implementations of the culture of death. And if you're not ready for it, if you're not prepared, then you and your loved ones will be at immediate risk. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Life Matters. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I was very excited when I heard about LifeFest Film Festival. LifeFest is the film festival dedicated to showcasing films that affirm the intrinsic worth of innocent human life and the profound significance of each life. I know one of your prizes is the Capra Award, awarded to that production that best reflects Frank Capra's thematic ideal. One seemingly insignificant person can in fact change the whole world in which he or she lives. That one singular life ends up being of vital importance. I'm so glad to hear that you are cherishing that in this film festival and are committed to artfully and creatively protect the lives of those who can't possibly promote themselves. They are dependent on the love and goodwill of people like you to speak on their behalf. Well done. Find out about the exciting cultural change impacting Hollywood. Go to lifefilmfest.com. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back. We're talking about the assisted suicide debate. Now, with the practice of medicine, there are many things that are being done behind closed doors. Many things are being done without true benefit of the law, but no one cares. No one is holding accountable the perpetrators. So we're going to talk about that and how this practice is spreading like a cancer throughout our nation and how states that are practicing assisted suicide are seeking to expand into those states that still have protections for the medically vulnerable. So buckle your seatbelts and listen up, because again, if you are pro-life in any way, if you are concerned about your loved ones, if your loved ones are in a nursing home, you must personally be involved in their care and making sure that they're getting adequate care. I can have you go back. Please do go back to our podcast. It's available at lifematters.life. And look at the various episodes on nursing home care and nursing home reform, on how to guard and care for those who are medically vulnerable and medically dependent. It's critically important that you be involved in this debate. Otherwise, lives will be lost, the lives of your loved ones, and perhaps even your own life. So if you look at a map of the United States, you know that there are certain states that have legalized assisted suicide, medical killing in the name of compassion. But there are numerous states that are considering legislation, and that includes Arizona and Minnesota and Wisconsin. It includes Missouri and Iowa and Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania. It includes Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Florida. And those are just some. So this is not an issue that's going away. It's an incredibly emotional issue, and the emotions are very powerful. I've spent extended time talking about this and interviewing experts, psychologists, who can explain to you why legalizing killing in the name of emotions is a very dangerous thing, and that someone's cry for suicide is actually revealing a very much deeper issue. These are people who have never been in these circumstances, and they don't know what to do. 
and the desire for suicide has been universally recognized, up until recently, but recognized as a cry of emotional need, of emotional help. I need help. I'm at the end of my rope. And that's why we have suicide hotlines. That's why we talk people off the ledges of buildings. It's not to keep the sidewalks clean. The reason we want to help someone who is suicidal is they're not in their right mind. Their emotions have overwhelmed them. And if we're a decent society, we will help them. We will intervene. And many states have that proviso where you will protect someone who's a danger to themselves or others, that you will intervene. And states authorize that intervention. But now, with suicide, our culture has changed. Our culture has become a utopian nightmare that says, well, if you're imperfect in any way and you're suicidal, well, we want to help get rid of you. That's exactly what's going on in many countries in Europe. Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland as tourist suicide. But Canada, we've done a separate program on euthanasia in Canada, and there they're killing people that have nothing wrong with them. They've legalized assisted suicide for the depressed. They've legalized assisted suicide principally to save money. And that's been an actual statement from the Canadian government because there, their entire medical system is government-sponsored. So to save the government money, they are glad to have you gone. And that's the case in our neighbor Canada right now. Again, we spent a lot of time on that in the past. Right now, I'm talking about your own country and how the legalization in some states has spread to the legalization nationally. So I'd like to read to you from my friend, Wesley Smith. I recommend his writing. Go ahead and Google him, Wesley Smith. And he is an excellent writer and advocate. And this is what he says in a recent article. Assisted suicide advocates have long sought to simply impose their death agenda throughout the nation, regardless of state laws to the contrary. Indeed, not long after Oregon voters legalized assisted suicide in that state in 1994, advocates tried to get the Supreme Court to impose a nationwide a Roe v. Wade type of constitutional right to assisted suicide. That was the Glucksburg decision. And the Glucksburg decision was an affirmation that there is no federal right to die. There is no federal right to be killed on request. So that was an important decision. But that has not stopped her opponents. They never quit. Back to Wesley. He says, after they failed to sweep the country with legalization efforts, despite decades of advocacy, only 10 states in the District of Columbia currently have doctor-assisted suicide. So they have now fashioned a new scheme to open the door to hasten death to any adult in the country with an illness. As I said, many times you need not have a physical illness once this practice goes unmonitored. And here in California, it is essentially unmonitored. But I digress. Here's what Wesley says about their game. When advocates push to legalize assisted suicide, they always provide there'll be strict guidelines that it will protect against abuse. One of these supposedly safeguard steps requires that anyone seeking a lethal prescription be a state resident. In this way, they insincerely assure that the state will not allow suicide tourism, that it not be a destination as it is now in Switzerland a country that allows suicide of people and suicide clinics to operate openly and foreigners can freely come to kill themselves. So what's happening is that they are now advertising in other states. Most states like California, Oregon, and Washington, and now Colorado have said, you no longer have to be a state resident. This means that any nearby state that has said, gosh, people in nursing homes, gosh, people have been given a terminal diagnosis. You don't have to be in a nursing home. People who are depressed and want to kill themselves. Well, if you live in Utah or you live in any state that touches on Colorado, well, you can just go to Colorado and kill yourself now. Now, these states are practicing suicide tourism. 
And this is how they're attempting to nationalize this process. This is how they are attempting to superimpose the culture of death on the entire nation. That is why you must be very, very aware if you are a loved one, are diagnosed with an illness, and there seems to be no hope, I recommend you do this. Get another doctor. Because there's always hope with honest medicine. Perhaps it is incurable. And that's quite possible. But the pain of even the most difficult of cancers can be treated, I know. I know not only because I've taken such treatment, but I know others that have taken it. But even the most difficult of cancers, the pain can be treated, and it doesn't have to put you in a stupor. It doesn't have to knock you out and make you irrelevant. You can still be consciously involved in life with modern pain control regimens. If you are a loved one or in pain, and the doctor's not dealing with the pain, the answer is simple. It's not kill the patient. The answer is get another doctor. And yet right now, the emotions of the media, the intellectually dishonest, and really the media that's committed to destroying the values of Western society, they are pushing assisted suicide nationwide. They've accomplished this already in Canada. Again, go back to our episodes on Canada. I want to remind you that I have another iteration in which I talk about these end-of-life issues at greater length. As a Commissioner on Aging, I have a podcast dedicated to aging. I prefer to call it maturity and the call to maturity. It's actually most societies that encourage the care of the mature and elderly. If you think about what it means to get old, you're finally learning about life. And sadly, we live in a culture that doesn't want to get old that resents the aged, and often wants to get them out of our life. And that is a culture of selfishness. But for a mature culture, they take a mature view of life. And so that's a video podcast. It'll be available on YouTube and Rumble. But that is called The Call to Maturity with Brian Johnston. You can find out more at brianjohnston.net, where I talk about these things in depth. And yes, there are spiritual implications to getting older, and they're actually good. All noble and honorable societies revere the elderly, but your society right now is dismissing and diminishing the elderly. Your society right now is removing people who are seen as burdensome, and yet it is these very people that can bring great wisdom and great benefit to others and to the society in which they live. We have embraced the wrong values as a society. So understand right now that assisted suicide is sweeping the nation. You need to be aware of it. You need to understand the spiritual and legal challenges that surround you right now if you wish to be an advocate for those who can't protect themselves, and also if you wish to be an advocate for yourself because innocent human lives are at stake. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Life Matters. I want to remind you of my book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. Available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. I recommend getting the Kindle version because there's links to all the documenting evidence. This isn't because I say it. This is actually what reality is. Every pro-life and even pro-abortion legal expert admits Roe versus Wade makes no sense. It's actually Doe v. Bolton that unleashed doctors to kill a baby at any time whenever they want it. You need to find out those facts and they're documented. And the fact is, is we're not addressing the reality of legalized abortion. We want to help you understand this battle right now. You can get the audio version online. Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. You're going to come away from the book with a new understanding of what this battle is actually about. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. 
As I said, we are looking at a serious expansion of the assisted suicide medical killing practice in the United States. And if you live in the state of Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, Minnesota, Virginia, they are seriously looking at this. I'm concerned that in New York, the State Bar Association, again, this is a matter of the law. The State Bar Association had been opposed in previous years, but now the State Bar has dropped its opposition. My experience is in states where the Medical Association goes neutral, where they drop their opposition, it tends to pass quite quickly. Why is that? Because it's the doctors who are the number one protectors of the medically vulnerable. It is the doctor in the practice of medicine that has been dedicated as a profession to always care for, but never intentionally harm those in their care. To do no harm has been the maxim of the medical profession for literally centuries. That's primum non nocere in Latin. Literally, the first thing is you never harm your patient. But now they get to kill them. That's a direct violation of the Hippocratic Oath. And you'll hear a lot of fluff, a lot of emotions, a lot of violin playing as they explain, oh, but this is a special case. This is incurable. Or the person is crying for suicide. They're crying out for it. You need to relent. You need to make sure that doctors can kill them. You are being lied to. Emotions and the power of our own emotions if we're misled. I saw a very interesting comment from an evangelical pastor that I admire, and he was talking about the word confusion. And he was explaining how, spiritually speaking, the word confusion and the word deception are very much related. And think about it. If you have an important job you have to do, if there's a decision that has to be made, but you're confused about what you're to do, you have fallen into deception. If someone has confused you about what your decision should be, guard yourself because you've been brought into deception. So there are many places in Scripture where it talks about the deception of the wily one, the evil one. And it's clear that in this world, there's a lot of deception. There's a lot of media voices that are out to confuse very important issues, issues that are life and death issues, issues that involve your decisions. And if you're confused emotionally, it's very easy for you to be deceived, to make the wrong decision when you are the decision maker who is the absolute final word. And that's one of the privileges we have. Of, again, that's the meaning of choice, right? Because God has given us our freedom. That doesn't mean to do whatever you want. Our human ability for self-determination is not a license to do whatever you feel like. And mature people understand that. You know, back to the issue of maturity. As I said, I have focused on this a lot, done studies on it, and I'm in the middle of a book called The Call to Maturity. You know, maturity for human beings isn't about your body getting older. I've met quite a few elderly people in nursing homes. Some are extraordinary and have extraordinary stories of their life. It's a real privilege. But I've met others who actually are still somewhat immature. An older man only wanted to talk about the cars he used to own and things that he used to have. And it really didn't occur to him that his life was coming to an end very, very quickly. He was reveling in these other things. He was spiritually immature. And yet, you and I know young people, the greatest compliment you can give a teenager is to not call them a teenager, but instead a young man, a young woman. What a mature young woman. What a mature young man. Because their focus, their spiritual focus, and as a human being, yes, you have a body and it does age. There's things you can do to take care of it, but it still is going to age and that's irreversible. You're still getting older, and your soul is very much involved with your body. A lot of your emotions in your soul is because of things you ate. I hate to say it, but your emotions can go up and down. If you have a lot of sugar, you can be on a sugar high, or a lot of coffee, or a lot of alcohol. That will affect your soul, your emotions, because it's affected your body. 
So your soul is very much tied to your body, but you have a third part of your nature. According to the scriptures, you're made in the image of God, if you believe in the Christian scriptures. And God is spirit. Those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. And it's that third element of our humanity, our spirits. That's why we're here, that our spiritual growth happen. That's the sign of maturity. As I said, whether a teenager or an 88-year-old man, the decision of your spirit determines how mature you are. If you're really growing as a human being, getting old as an oak tree, you can measure that. You can measure the rings. You can measure how many acorns it drops off. You can see how large it gets. But the fact is, is you're not merely a tree. As a human being, your call to maturity is to be fully mature, but principally in your spirit. And your life experiences are there so that you will make wise spiritual decisions, important decisions, so that you will conquer your own soulish feelings and emotion. You know what the scripture says? It says that the word of God is alive and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit. That there's a difference between your soul and your spirit. And it's very important that you see that distinction. It's very important that you take command of your feelings, particularly if those feelings are leading you in a bad direction, leading you perhaps to kill someone, which is what happens in assisted suicide. The emotions of the day and the idea that someone is suffering and will be able to get rid of this by killing them. That's a very emotional argument. So if you're in a situation with your family, as I have been, where everyone else says, hey, let's just let mom die. Let's take away her food and water right now, and the doctor will give her pain killers. You're intending her to be dead, because once you take away that food and water, she can only die. That's the only answer. But all of these issues get back to understanding the nature of human life, and that you don't make important decisions based on your emotions or even the emotions of others. There are higher principles at stake. And that's why we talk about those when we talk about the right to life, because it's in adhering to these principles that we can have a better life and the lives around you can be better off. Again, before 73, doctors didn't intentionally kill anyone. It was against their oath. But now it's routine. Now you're surrounded by a culture of death and we want you prepared to do battle in this very wicked generation. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council.